Hey everybody, good morning. It's Taylor from Dames a la Mode, and today I'm doing something a little bit different than my typical videos, which are usually about sewing and costuming. Today I'm gonna to talk about some of my historical jewelry that I make. Um, this weekend would normally be the Jane Austen Festival that happens in Kentucky every year, but of course it's been postponed. So I thought today I would show you some of my favorite pieces of Regency jewelry that I have available in my shop, just so you can see what it looks like when it's on, get a little bit of explanation for it, and hopefully get a new view of some of my jewelry. Um, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this, so hopefully it works out. But if you're only here for sewing and costuming, then feel free to, to just move right on along. <laughs> this is really going to be a jewelry focused video only. Now, I can't promise that all of these items that you're going to see in this video are going to be available forever. A lot of my items are limited or vintage or something like that. But on the day I'm posting this video, all of these items are available and I'll link directly to them in my shop down below if you want to see where they are available online. So the very first thing that I want to show you is this new necklace that I've made. This is my most recent item. And you guys on Instagram and Facebook helped me choose which one of these. I put up two portraits and said, which necklace should I make? And this was sort of the overwhelming majority. So this is a very simple festoon style necklace with a single Swarovski crystal in the middle. It's a really delicate piece, very simple. I made it with a clear crystal, but it's actually available with lots of other colors too, if there's another color that you like. Um, and you can see the portrait that inspired it. So I'm really happy with it. And this actually makes a really nice, nice necklace for everyday wear, I think too. Like the scale of it is, is really simple, but it's still a little bit unusual. So that's necklace number one. So the second item that I want to show you is my uh, coral necklaces. Coral was extremely popular as jewelry starting in the 1790s and, you know, especially in the Regency period. Um, it came in a lot of colors, orange, pink, red. Obviously, coral is an endangered species today, so I try really hard not to use real coral unless I can find sustainable, which is harder to do. So most of my coral options are glass or some other sort of stone that looks like coral. And these are actually shell pearls. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus on them. Huh. So these are shell pearls. And shell pearls are sort of fake pearls, but that are made out of the material that comes from the inside of an oyster shell. shell it's called nacre. And they basically are reconstituted into beads. So they have a really wonderful like weight to them and a really nice feel that feels like pearls or real stones, but they're a more sustainable option because they're obviously not real coral. And they're dyed this, or sorry, they're coated with like a, a really bright cherry red sort of uh, coating on them that gives them this really nice shine. So these are, this is a really pretty option for like a simple coral necklace or every day. I actually wear this style of necklace a lot in my everyday life. It's such a nice little pop of color. Now another coral option that I have available is this necklace, <laughs> just kind of wacky looking. These are super cool necklaces. They're um, vintage new old stock, which means that they're They've never been used, but they were produced in the past for some sort of manufacturer, and then they get sort of sold off, you know, in their original packaging and stuff like that. So these were made in Europe at some point. They're just tiny little glass beads that are twisted together, and it's a really long <laughs> necklace, and it can be worn a lot of different ways. So it can be worn really long. It can be looped up with some sort of brooch or miniature or something like that and sort of have the swag effect. And it can also be looped around several times and then stacked. So you get this look where you have lots of little necklaces, which you see uh, commonly in portraits and stuff like that. And depending on the size of your neck, you can either get it wrapped around three or four times, or you could do two and have like a high low version. It's just a super versatile necklace, really unusual and beautiful. Um, and these are available on my website now. I have only a few of them left. They've been really popular sellers, um, but I'll link to them down below as well. All right, this is another new item. And this is a necklace that's made with um, cut glass faceted beads that sort of look like jet. And they're really cool because they're beautifully sparkly. The facets on the glass are so sharp that they just catch the light in the most beautiful way. So it's not just like a bland black necklace. It's a great like super fancy morning necklace. And it looks, I think, really elegant and beautiful when it's worn as well. And I think this paired with like a simple dress really makes a nice statement. And there's also 
matching earrings to this, which can be purchased available um, on their own as well. I love the teardrop dangles. I just think they're such an elegant and classic style. And they make such fun noises. <laughs> All right, let's talk about collet necklaces. So collet necklaces are the most common style that I offer. Um, and these were a really popular necklace starting in the 18th century and they last in fashion. Um, I mean, really until today, Anna Wintour wears them all the time, um, but they're really popular historically in the Victorian and the Edwardian period as well as like a formal, really dressy style of uh, necklace. So this is one of my halo necklaces. And the halo describes all the little stones that are around the setting. Now these are really beautiful stones because they're flat on the back and they're faceted on the top. So they have this mirror finish to the back of them which makes them just flash and shine beautifully. And it's kind of a shame that this is such a bright, well-lit room because these actually look the most beautiful when they're in low light. They seem to just multiply and reflect the light back at the viewer. So they're super sparkly in low light. But they're not so bad in bright light either. <laughs> this is my large oval style of halo necklace, and I have this available in several colors. Now, a slightly smaller but still fabulous <laughs> version of my halo necklace is this one. This is also a brand new item that I've just listed. This necklace is made with vintage Swarovski emerald crystals. Once again, in halo settings with the little dangles. Um, this style of necklace with the halo settings and the dangles was really popular in the Regency period. Um, Empress Josephine had several versions of this style of necklace, and you see them in a lot of her portraits. And they're just like so luxurious and incredible. You can't help but feel like a queen when you're wearing one of these. And again, these are extra beautiful in a low light situation um, when they just sparkle and shine, especially with the Swarovski crystals. They just are like disco balls around your neck. They're so beautiful. These are stones that have foil on the backing, which is how they would have been done in the Georgian period because it helps to reflect the light if you're in a situation that's lit by firelight, candlelight, moonlight, something like that. Because they didn't have the bright electric lights that we have today, obviously, they made jewelry that looked really excellent in low light situations because that's how most of the situations would have been in the evening. So they're really made for that sort of experience. And if you've ever been around people who are wearing these necklaces in candlelight, it's pretty dazzling what they actually look like. One of these days I'll have to do a video that's lit by candlelight so I can show you what they actually look like that, that way. This is my large oval style of collet necklace. These stones are 18 by 13 millimeters. So they're a pretty bold size. This is probably my favorite size on me um, for my body frame. I'm pretty tall, I'm 5'6", I'm really broad shouldered, and I look best, I think, when I have a piece of jewelry that's a little bit of a larger scale, but it totally depends on what your figure looks like. Some people look better in the smaller ones, some people look better in the bigger ones, and sometimes I see really delicate people who just totally rock these giant pieces, so it's not necessarily <laughs> just what your body frame looks like. It also can be about your personal size style. These stones are uh, flat on the back and they're totally smooth on the top so they have no facets to them so all of their sparkle is sort of a mirror like reflection. Oh I really like these stones. This is a citrine color which is one of my favorites. I don't think it gets anywhere near enough love <laughs> but I really like yellows and oranges for jewelry. Uh, next up, we have a large octagon shaped stone. So these are the same 18 by 13 millimeter size as the uh, orange one I showed a moment ago, but these obviously are octagon shaped stones. And these are a little bit unusual because the stones themselves are unfoiled. So they don't have foil backing, which is what most of my stones do. So they're clear stones and they're set in open back settings. These are gonna give you a more subtle sparkle, particularly in the evening because they're not gonna be reflecting as much. Um, so these are really lovely for day wear as well. And you just get a, a sort of a more, I guess natural color you could say from these stones and they're really pretty. These in particular are Swarovski stones so they're extra sparkly, very pretty. If you're not quite comfortable wearing the really big pieces of jewelry, this is the medium oval size necklace. 
So these are 14 by 10 millimeter stones. And you can see it has a much more subtle effect. You get a lot more stones in one of these necklaces, um, but it's obviously a smaller scale. These are again, unfoiled stones. So they're gonna be a more natural tone to them. They're not gonna be quite as sparkly as the foil back stones. So they're really nice for day wear. And then this is my smallest style necklace. These are the small ovals. And these are Swarovski stones in a um, Montana blue color. They're really unusual and a really unique color of blue and they're super sparkly. This is a style and size that I recommend as sort of like a um, introduction collet necklace. If you're not sure if this is gonna be a style that's gonna work for you, or you just wanna sort of dip your toes in, um, this is a really nice style to use. And these are also really excellent for everyday wear if you want something that's not quite so bold, um, you can wear one of these. I think these personally look really excellent with just like a simple white t-shirt and a pair of jeans. Um, these are really easy to sort of dress up or dress down as needed. And if you have a smaller frame, this is also a good size as well, particularly if you're not going for a really impactful style. All right, let's talk about some non-necklace pieces. Um, the first one that I'll talk about is my um, Reproduction Jane Austen Cross. So this is a replica um, that I had made, and I had these settings custom made just for me to replicate Jane's Cross as closely as was possible with um, our modern materials. So it's not exactly the same size as hers because she was using hand cut topaz stones and I'm obviously using machine produced stones that are calibered, um, but this is really close. And one thing I really love, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's little balls on the end of each arm and that was something that Jane's Cross has as well. So this is made with um, vintage Swarovski light Colorado topaz crystals, which is really close to Jane's original one. And one thing that's really unusual about this is the size of it, people always expect that Jane's cross is going to be really small. I think because of the cross that Lizzie Bennett wears in the BBC version of Pride and Prejudice, which is much smaller, and people sort of assume that's going to be Jane's cross, but hers is actually quite large. You can see when you actually have it on your person, like this is a really impactful piece of jewelry. It's not subtle. <laughs> So um, this is a really nice, um, typical size for the Georgian period. I did make a smaller version as well. So I have the big Jane Cross and then the baby Jane Cross. If you just don't feel like you can pull off this really large one, I did make a smaller version as well that's a little bit more subtle if you're more comfortable with something like that for everyday wear. And you can see the comparative sizes of the two when you're wearing them. These typically would have been worn on a chain during the Regency period, um, and you can purchase it with a matching chain from my shop, or you can use your own chain. It has a pretty large bail on it, so it'll take most small chains that you might have around your house. And if you wanted to wear this for 18th century use, this style was also common in the 18th century, you could string it on a ribbon, which was a, a common styling of that period. I have two new brooch styles as well in my shop. Um, the first one is the sort of classic crystal cluster brooch, um, which has two rows. Let's see if I can get a close-up shot of that. Which has two rows of clear Swarovski crystals and then a large stone in the center. This one is obviously made in ruby red, but I actually have lots of different colors available on this one. So you have lots of color options for this one. I just made it up in ruby because I like this one a lot. <laughs> And then my second new style is this really lovely bar brooch that's super sparkly. These are made with all Swarovski crystals, so they have a lot of really beautiful sparkle and shine. Both of these styles of brooches can be used as bodice ornaments, so, you know, like in the center of a Regency gown. They also make really excellent turban ornaments if you have a sash or a turban or some sort of decoration in your uh, hair on your head. They, like, go really nicely in there as well. It's a nice way to add a little bit of extra sparkle to your outfit. And I just don't think we use brooches enough. Like they're such a wonderful, versatile style. This is a really cool new item that I posted about on my Instagram, so you may have seen it. And these are actually uh, belt buckles. So it comes with two little links, basically, that clip into the side here. So you can sew your own strip of ribbon or um, self fabric or something like that and create a belt buckle that you can wear, you know, on the, the center point of your um, Regency gown. 
I've never seen anything like this come up for sale before. And these are new old stock pieces like that long coral necklace that I showed you before. So as soon as I saw them, I basically bought everything that was available because I just thought they were so unique. And it actually comes in both this ivory color and sort of a, a carnelian red color as well. You can see how reflective it is because you can see my camera <laughs> in there. So these are really, really pretty and unusual. Um, I kept one in each color for myself because they were such a find. Um, and they're a really cool way to customize your dress and add a little bit of visual interest with something that's not sparkly. You know, this is sort of more subtle jewelry despite the large size, um, but it's just a really nice addition to a day wear outfit or a police or something like that. And then finally, I wanted to show you a new style of earring that I have available. These are based off of this portrait that you can see right here. And they have a little cluster of three stones on the top and then a large pear-shaped stone on the bottom. These are quite large earrings when you uh, have them on, but they're really beautiful. They have so much dangle and dance and sparkle to them. And they're also available in several different colors for the top stones and the bottom stone can either be made as the crystal as you see here or as a long teardrop pearl as well. So there's a lot of variety in these. Ooh, I like them a lot. <laughs> and then finally, because we're talking about Jane and the Jane Austen Festival, here are my little Jane Austen silhouette earrings um, that I have available. These obviously are not historically accurate. Don't wear these with your costumes if you're going for historical accuracy. Um, but I had these little charms made up based off of Jane's silhouette. And if you can just make out her little signature is in there as well. Um, so they're just a nice little subtle nod to Jane. I think it's not totally obvious that they're Jane Austen earrings. So they're one of those things where if you're wearing these in public and somebody comments on them, you like know that they're another Jane Austen nerd. And they're a nice subtle size in real life, but because they're gold plated, they have a lot of sparkle and shine to them. So they make for really interesting uh, little earrings. These are a great gift for like a teacher or uh, some sort of person in your life who likes uh, English literature or nerdery in general. All right, uh, that's everything I have to show you today. I hope that this was helpful and that you enjoyed seeing some of my jewelry in person, I guess, at least in motion, so you can get a better idea of the size and style. Um, I, I don't know if this is helpful to visualize. It's hard for me to tell because I, of course, know what everything looks like because I make it. <laughs> but I know that sometimes pictures on the website that are static are just not a good way to see what something looks like. So I hope that this was helpful. If there's something else that you want to see a video of and show me wearing it or get this, a sense of scale, please feel free to leave a link to that item in the comments. You can see all of my items available at www damesalamode.com, which of course I'll link to down below. And just feel free to peruse if you see something and you're just like, mm, I'm not sure if that's the right size for me or I'd like to see it compared to another one. Just let me know. Leave me a link below in the comments and I'll hopefully include that in the next video that I do. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great day and happy Jane Austen Festival to all of us here at home. <laughs>